WFSB, Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News This Morning. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Friday the 13th. I'm Nicole Nalepa. Before we get to today's top stories, let's check in with meteorologist Scott Haney. You had that early warning weather alert. Did it just expire? It just expired, <laughs> 7 o'clock. Good news, we have retired the alert. Things are still wet out there, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, Nothing that's horrendous. Let's take you to Waterbury where it is uh, currently raining right now. You can see the roads are wet. We have some light scattered showers moving through 50 degrees in Waterbury. Here's the only live Doppler radar in Connecticut indicating a little bit of that band of rain shower activity. Again, nothing too horrendous. We do have some moderate rain coming down in Monroe. Oxford, Seymour, Easton, Reading, Naugatuck, right down Route 8. So if you're driving there, please be careful. Keep your speeds down. We'll take you on over to uh, Northeast Connecticut. The quiet corner is getting a little bit wet. Chaplin, thank you, Myrna. Appreciate the emails this morning. Right on Phoenixville Road, Pumpkin Hill Road. Uh, you've got uh, Pomfret Road in this part of the state getting a little bit wet, and there's more shower activity coming in from the south. So don't put those umbrellas too far back away. It might not be raining in your hometown right now, like uh, right here in the Connecticut River Valley, but it will be throughout now until about noontime, and that's when the rain is going to shut down. So roads are wet. Slow it down. Keep your speeds down. Visibility, not bad, considering what we've got out there. We're at five to six miles in uh, visibility. That's the worst of it. Temperatures, all right, 49 in Torrington. That's the cool spot. It is 56 degrees at Brainerd. 56 on Friday the 13th, January 13th. January 13th. We are literally 30 to 35 degrees warmer than average and 20 to 25 degrees better than where we were yesterday. Remarkable. Now, there are those winds. It is sustained out there anywhere from 13 to 17 miles an hour. So hang on to your hat and your steering wheel. And we do have some gusts out there right now to 26. Again, nothing horrendous. There's the satellite and radar confirming showers over Long Island will continue to make their way into Connecticut over the course of the next three to four hours. And then everything will shut down. You can see we're dealing with the back edge of the system right now. There is some heavy rain to the east of Connecticut. So if you are driving there, be forewarned. We're dealing with some of that moderate to heavy rain. Futurecast keeps the showers going right up until about noon and then we should might we might even see some partial clearing by sunset a little bit later on this afternoon and then tonight we'll be under partly to mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow the clouds hang tough as a storm off the coast uh, sends some clouds back into the forecast for us Saturday and for Sunday. It's an offshore storm uh, that could bring some snow to the Cape and the islands but not for us. We'll just be under mostly cloudy skies. All right, we are taking a look at the temperature trend today in the mid 50s with some showers that should all taper off by this afternoon. More of the same for the shoreline 50s and then watch watch the numbers drop through the uh, afternoon right on into this evening. We're going to be in the upper 30s, low 40s. Still some uh, upper 40s by 4 p.m. And then by midnight tonight, we're in the upper 20s, low to mid 30s. And then by tomorrow morning, we're talking about temperatures out there that are going to be rising, uh, excuse me, dropping into the upper 20s, low 30s. So here's your seven-day forecast, 37 tomorrow, 38 on Sunday. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, 42. Looks pretty good. 44 on Tuesday with scattered showers, mild temperatures Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, above average. The normal high for this time of year is 35 degrees. Here come your shoreline highs, equivalent to where we're headed inland. 704 is now the time. We're going to send it back to Nicole for the rest of today's news. Hey, Nicole. All right. Hey, Scott. We are following a wild story for you. So you were talking about some wild weather in January. Well, buckle up. Listen to this. In Bristol, a man is in custody after carrying out a crime spree literally across Connecticut. Jimmy Shoemaker Gonzalez is now awaiting arraignment and investigators say he stole a police cruiser and then crashed into the diner. But that's not how it all ended. Police tell us that it all started when Gonzalez slammed into a plow truck with a stolen SUV and then tried and failed at stealing two cars at knife point. Now on his third attempt, he finally succeeded, but only after stabbing a 27 year old driver who is now recovering at a local hospital. 
After reaching Cambridge Park in Bristol, Gonzalez uh, got out of the car he was driving and somehow stole a police cruiser and allegedly fired shots. Investigators say he then led police on for two miles before finally slamming into Palma's diner and customers inside said it was like watching a movie unfold before them. Gonzalez is currently being held on a $1 million bond. And in New Haven this morning, one person is facing criminal mischief and disorderly conduct charges after police say that person vandalized City Hall. So police say that the vandals actually targeted the building yesterday morning by throwing rocks at the windows on the first and second floors, and they ended up smashing five windows. Multiple suspects were involved, but at this time, only one person has been arrested. New Haven Mayor Justin Elliger says that he does not believe that this attack was targeted. Our indications are there was a, a struggle, uh, individual is struggling with some mental health challenges, and um, uh, there's no you know particular targeting of anyone at City Hall or anything like that at this point. But addition, in addition to City Hall, this morning lights surrounding the Amistad Memorial also need to be repaired. And we have new details this morning unfolding about another police chase. A man is facing a slew of charges for his alleged role in a police pursuit in Groton. So New London police ended up arresting 54-year-old Robert Lechner after someone called 911 about a drunk driver on the Cross Sound Ferry yesterday. Police tell us that Lechner almost hit an officer as he tried to drive away. The ensuing chase went through Ledger and ended in Groton. Thankfully, no one was hurt. But today, Lechner is being held in police custody on a $150,000 bond. A man accused of shooting his wife in the chest faced a judge in East Hartford, and here's what we know. Luis Toro Vargas was arrested Wednesday after he was tackled by police right on the front lawn of a home on Lafayette Avenue. Investigators tell us that the couple was in the process of a divorce when Toro Vargas shot his wife while his two children were inside the home. Luckily, his estranged wife is expected to survive. And on to a disturbing story we're following for you in Plainfield this morning. Two people are facing child abuse charges this morning. Police arrested 30-year-old Kayla Charlwood and 35-year-old Jason Homant. Now, investigators say they, re they received a report last month about an inappropriate video showing one of the suspects threatening and hitting a child. Police accused the second suspect of recording the video and not stopping the abuse. And we are also tracking a developing story for you in Norwich where fire crews battled this house fire on Prentice Street last night. Investigators have not reported any injuries, but they are still trying to figure out what caused that fire. So we'll be sure to keep you posted on the Channel 3 app. And a tanker rollover in Woodstock caused Perrin Road to be closed for several hours. It's now back open this morning, but we know a little bit more about the crash, which happened around 4 yesterday. Officials say that the truck was carrying hundreds of gallons of milk. Thankfully, no injuries were reported, but DEEP had their hands full trying to clean this up. They actually had to be notified of the situation because milk is considered an oil and can actually cause a biological oxygen hazard when it's broken down with water. Who knew? Again, no one was hurt. The scene is now clear and hopefully no tears were shed. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Friday morning. Happy Friday, everyone. As always, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. So have a great day. Be healthy, stay positive, and have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.